Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. This is another sorting out, tidying up and dealing with the mess of my sewing room. It's been two and a half years since I last did this room and um, yeah, quite frankly, I haven't tidied up much since then. I really meant to keep it tidy but I'm just not very good at it. If you're a regular here, you'll know that already. If you're new here, hello, welcome. This is not a tidying up video by a tidy person. I mean, I saw once uh, an office tidy up video and she basically moved her, put away her cup of, her empty cup of coffee and straightened up a pencil. No, this is not what you're gonna get here. So uh, no judgments, please. I am embarrassing myself for the sake of your entertainment because I think this room is the worst it has ever been. And if you've seen it before, that's saying something. So without further ado, here it is. Don't judge me too harshly, please. Well, how, sh how shall I do this? Let's stand in the corner. Okay, this is sort of an overview of my room from here. So that's it from this side. It goes round and over on this side of the room. That's sort of where my fabric stash is. And you can't really see it, but this is my desk. Yeah, you get the idea basically. One of the reasons it's so bad is it's Janu it's the beginning of January and uh, over Christmas when I'm trying to get everything clear in the other rooms. Oh, this is a nice flattering light. The sun is just setting. <laughs> um, yeah, when I'm like frantically getting things out the way of the living room and kitchen when we have visitors to coming to stay with us, uh, everything gets dumped in here. So it is a bit worse. There's a lot of Christmas present packaging that shouldn't take long to just squash and put in recycling but even with that stuff yeah look I mean I've got um I've got an empty advent calendar on the floor I haven't had a chocolate advent calendar in years and this Thornton's one Thornton's Continental oh my gosh that was lovely <laughs> not cheap but lovely right getting distracted uh what was I saying <laughs> despite some of the things being I think quite quite a quick and easy tidy and sort out. I'm anticipating this to take a little while, particularly as I have got an awful lot of things on my to-do list. Being January, it's the time to get started, get past the Christmas break and really get back to work. So that's really one of the reasons why I've got to get on with this. But hopefully I'll make good progress quickly because I've got a lot of clothes I really want to make for Threads of a Fairy Tale this year. So I need to get this room organised. I'll quickly tell you about some of the things I can do in here. So that cupboard there is actually almost empty. Some bits of rubbish have sort of started sneaking in and the shelf in there still needs a little bit of sorting out. But that was all my craft stuff, which has now gone downstairs to the basement where I've got a craft area. There's a video about that if you want to have a look at it. So I'm hoping to fit, oh dear. <laughs> there is a basket behind there full of tutu net. I'm thinking about putting that in that cupboard and that'll free up a bit of space over there. Also, I don't know if you can see, but there is a stack here of bags of fabric, which was kindly given to me. And again, if you're interested, there's a fabric haul uh, where you can see it all. I'll put that, I'll link that video below if you'd like a good fabric haul. I'm gonna see if I can fit it all on this set of shelves because this is meant to be four large pieces of fabric, which are actually big enough to make into a garment. Whereas most of my stuff, uh, if you're new here, uh, I'll just quickly explain that the clothes I make are usually recycled from other items of clothing. I try and um, keep things out of landfill and so I use a lot of small bits of fabric and sort of patchwork it all together to make some clothes. Uh, check out my shop, Threads of a Fairy Tale, if you're interested in seeing that. So it's quite difficult to store, but I've got three big tubs that I keep all the scrappy little bits in. And I want to make sure those are more accessible so that I can start using them up a little easier. So, uh, that's my plan. Wish me luck. <laughs> Well, today I'm going to tackle my desk because it's back to work now and um, well frankly it's doing my head in. <laughs> it is mainly notebooks and yeah I won't go over everything because I did a very thorough desk tidy and desk tour about this time last year. Yeah this is what I'm tackling now. And I'm going to listen to my podcasts. Right, I'm halfway through. A letters to a hopeful creative. If my clients or customers anything, what would it be? That's a really clarifying question sometimes. Who am I here for?
here's my little progress report. Here's my little stack of crafty things to go down to the cellar where the craft stuff is. A couple of notebooks I'm using all the time. And obviously there's still a long way to go, but I think a little bit of rejigging this stuff to put these pen pots further back. And I shall go through this pile of papers, bits of pieces of, from notebooks that I've got put in the wrong place. Here's my little stack of notebooks that I go to regularly. Threads of a fairy tale book, my By Helen Hobden book and uh, my blog book is there. So that's going to stay in one stack. That stack is notebooks that I do go to for reference quite often. So I don't want them hidden or just difficult to reach, difficult to get to. So they're staying there for the time being but I think they can be condensed because there's a few that I've just been using as general just sort of almost like scrap paper I think that can be organized and taken down a notch my tissues I do think I've got a cold coming and this stack of notebooks are either full or empty so they could be put away and the problem is my notebook cupboard is like behind there as you can see I've sort of stacked up notebooks in front of it because I can't get into it. So apart from doing a little, just pushing things back a bit on the desk, this is actually not so overwhelming now that I don't feel I can work here comfortably. So I'm gonna sort of leave the desk for a while because I'm sort of stuck now really until I can get to there. And I can't really get to there until all this stack of fabric is sorted. So I think actually what I'm going to do is start, literally start from one side and go to the other and clear up from right to left. An hour or so later, first three bags of rubbish to go out to the bin. Right, it's another evening, so here's a little update. Yeah, it's, it's obviously still not looking great, but I have moved the mannequin that was standing here, which makes such a difference. I've just popped it on top of my ribbon box for now. All this bit, I mean, there's still a lot here, but it's much more organized. I've managed to push the radiator over to this side, which gives me much more floor space here. And gradually the bits and pieces that are here that need to go in other rooms, I'm gradually putting away every now and then. Just moving that, I can't go over how much moving that mannequin really opens up this space and just shows me how much what, it was really blocking. <laughs> the exact amount of what I've got to tackle next. So next I think I'm going to gather together all the fake flowers. They've actually they've actually been dumped in here over Christmas. They were originally being displayed around the house but they weren't really very Christmassy so they got sort of dumped in here so I shall gather I'll just gather them together and I think I need to find a vase or something to keep them in. And then the next thing to do there are some items here that I've made relatively recently. Not this Victorian jacket. That was out because somebody wanted to confirm measurements. Oh, I love this. I really hope it goes to a good home soon. Look at that beautiful old lace. But yeah, there's some items of clothing there that need to go down to the storage chest where I keep clothes that have been made already. And this craft box can go away downstairs as well in my newly sorted craft area. <laughs> see a little bit more of the floor I'm gradually making my way towards this set of shelves here which I'm now going to tackle next I'm going to take out the scraps and add in the bigger pieces and and see if I have enough space to do that <laughs> So the top shelf is done and sorted. I am now regretting, and I'm so annoyed with myself that I didn't think of this. I'm regretting not putting the white at the top because look how much brighter that looks. That's really bouncing the light into the room. And I wish I'd got that at the top of the shelves now. But too late, I am not stacking all that again. Next job is to clear the whites. And uh, I think I'm gonna go 
red, pink, and then white on the end. These cards are fringing. There's a lot of this fringing on the shelf. I'm just gonna put that elsewhere for now. shelf is now done oh my god how good is it looking i can't think of a better way of spending this weekend i really can't it's such a miserable end of january day oh just look at that so <laughs> my my um my joy is short-lived though because the next shelf down first of all is covered by all the crap in front of it i know this one's going to be a bit tougher i've had to take all of the creams and beiges that were on this shelf off so they're sort of scattered on the floor about me there's some more here the floor is looking a bit like carnage at the moment but i'm so pleased that i'm getting through these bags i mean that one is empty uh that one is now filled with all that fringing that one is now empty we're doing okay i think no nope, there's one this bag under here so this bottom shelf is going to be i'm going to start with like the beiges and creams that didn't quite fit on that shelf then browns then blacks then greys fingers crossed that's going to fit on that shelf i'm going to sit on the floor amongst it though and just get stuck in <laughs> oh kind of did it kind of didn't mm, this is not gonna be easy <laughs> actually forgotten that I've got a whole basket of fabric shoved in this section so I think this was all scraps of black but I'm gonna have to go through it and remind myself what exactly was in here I think this is our old laundry basket at one point it's a really nice basket actually so I'm gonna get this out because I know I'm gonna need all of this shelf for folding fabric I've got so many beiges and browns oh my goodness me Perhaps I wasn't doing as well as I thought I was after all. <laughs> oh, there's another bag of whites down here. I had no idea that was there. the next day and I've been carrying on working on it and oh my goodness how good is that looking so yeah the shelves are full and I'm a little bit worried because there's still quite a lot left over <laughs> but still I'm I'm positive I'm gonna crack on get on with it I'll find homes for all of it <laughs> Okay, so I've stacked up that pile of baskets there. I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get that to the left of this shelving unit so I can see all of the fabric and the floor is clear right up to the shelving unit. So we'll see how we go. But as you can see, there's still an awful lot of stuff. There are still some of it, most of it's hidden, but there are some more organized storage bits going on here. Like for example, there's a basket here of some bias bindings got caught in it, but it is generally mostly fringing. I've got this basket here of embellishments, just small pieces of fabric with embellishments on it. And there's some other bags and things down there so I'm going to sort that out next I think so that at least that area looks neat and then it's a matter of going through all these carrier bags that I've got around the place checking what's in them I think most of it is scraps like where I've made for example a black dress and I've kept all the black scraps together so I'll see if I can organize that somehow slightly better <laughs> quick check-in to tell you how I'm getting on oh my goodness it's like I know I, I'm like 
Half of me is wishing I'd never even started, but that's ridiculous because I mean, I couldn't move in here. I had to get started, but I'm sort of feeling, yeah, well, yesterday evening I stopped. Um, I sort of had a moment of being really overwhelmed by it all and a bit like, oh my God, there is nothing I can do. I have too much stuff. I have too much fabric. I don't know. I honestly don't know where it all came from. <laughs> It's ridiculous. I think the first couple of years of me starting out in this venture to make new fairy tale clothing out of old bits, old scraps and stuff, I just sort of looked on eBay and kept gathering job lots of things so that I'd build up a big, uh, a lot of stuff quickly. That's the best value way of doing it. And I didn't have a lot of like startup funds or anything. Well, not virtually nothing so I'd look out for all these bargains and it just seemed to have snowballed and got a little bit out of control I'm really pleased that I did manage to get all of the big pieces of fabric up on that shelving unit but the scraps of fabric there's so much more of it than I thought so let me just show you so you've got Chris's talking downstairs in the background so yeah like I said I'm pleased with all of that but over here, I've still got, well, this basket of net. Um, I do have a plan for this. <laughs> That's going to go along with this bag of net here in this corner where I've got all my leather working stuff. The leather working stuff is going to go in that cupboard there. So that will free up that little bit of space. But I honestly don't really have anywhere else to put most of this. So I sorted it out and we've got an... <laughs> Under this is a is a Tupperware tub, I can just about show you. So this began as the only box I had for black, white and brown and grey. But also now I have this bag of white, this bag of brown, this bag of white, this bag of grey. And this entire basket is just black scraps of fabric. And then oh, I've got this bit of felt left over from a Clash of Clans costume. I'm not, not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, that originally was sitting on top of the basket of netting so there might be room for that on top again and then we've got this big bag of fringing actually this pile of stuff though can go upstairs amongst all the stuff I found some vintage and antique clothing that I've bought from yeah, vintage fairs that I sometimes go to mainly in Froome things like for example gorgeous french corset sort of special things there's quite a few bits here wedding dress that big petticoat that I picked up earlier and um, I think we've got another wedding dress down there those actually belong in my other fabric room yes guys that's this isn't it <laughs> if you're new here then uh, you might be mistaken for thinking this is my entire fabric stash it is not I have a whole other room upstairs <laughs> which you might have seen if you if you've been around a while I did a vlog I think in the summer early summer where I sort of showed you my Indian clothing fabric stash and I didn't I only showed half of that room the other half was too messy but mm. uh yeah let, let's sort of skirt over that quickly we're not talking about that today that's a video for another day sorting out that room but oh yeah my point was that up there there is a pile of vintage wedding dresses ready to be reused so I can take those up and put them up there I think it's quite nice I, I am able to walk across this floor a little bit which is um there's definite progress it's just taking a lot longer than I thought I think the results are not going to be you know like I imagine this completely clear floor gosh the lighting in here and that completely clear floor is not going to happen yeah so after me sort of feeling down about it yesterday I decided to take a day off of clearing up this room today but I will I think I might do something about that little pile of wedding dresses I'm not too worried about this lot this this is mainly going to be going elsewhere in the house every now and then I take stuff out and then more stuff gets added to the pile and there's still the odd thing I just don't know what to do with things like um I found this bit of macrame string which I think I might have done when I was a very bored child I'm not very good at throwing things away <laughs> so anyway yeah after having a little bit of a break hopefully I'll come back to this all refreshed I'm ready to listen to more podcasts as I do it. That's the good thing about doing this. I'm really catching up on some of the podcasts I listen to. So that's another positive. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, okay, it's a new day. 
and I'm going to start tackling this corner now. See how much of this stack I can get in that cupboard. Obviously I need to sort of clear out a little bit out of that first. Move these baskets along so I can open that cupboard door and actually get into that corner. <laughs> yep, that's my next task. <laughs> This is one of those things that's really sad to get rid of. It's my old craft fair sign before I changed the name to buy Helen Hobbiton. I guess I'm just going to throw it in the bin. It's a bit pointless now. One minute later, I cut off the edge. I thought if I can flatten that out, I can use it for flat lays for my blog and for Instagram. <laughs> quick progress report i've pretty much done it uh, so yeah in here we've now got the boxes of leather so it shouldn't be too hard to get to them it's just a matter of moving this basket and then i should be able to get to them nice and easily that box that's causing me all the trouble is actually a box full of my old copies of my novel <laughs> be in the place so if you want a copy let me know because i'd quite like to sell them <laughs> <laughs> and get them out of the way. If we go over here, I have a bin bag and two more carrot bags of rubbish. So I'm going to take those out to the bin now and call it a day. We're getting there, guys. We're actually getting there. I'm still so pleased that I managed to get all the big bits of fabric on that shelf there. But what this is really showing me is what fabric I need to use up the most and uh, very clearly need to use up. I've got a lot of black and white and neutrals, browns and greys scraps of fabric to use up. So I think I'm going to do a couple of projects which I have thought of a, such a cool name to call it. I'm going to call it the Scrap Heap Challenge and uh, make some dresses with all my bits and pieces that are left over that I've got because I just need to make the space. And obviously, and also some of the bigger pieces of fabric, I think I shall make some really large swooping, swooping, <laughs> sweeping dresses with them or skirts perhaps. Right, so now I'm on to the bit I've been looking forward to the most probably for this whole room. I can now get to this cupboard which is under this curtain. It's a shame I'm doing this in the evening, not during the day where the curtain would be open. So I'm just gonna have to sort of tuck it up because it's my notebook and sketchbook cupboard and all the stacks of notebooks on my desk can now hopefully get put away in there. So I'm really excited about that. In front of that cupboard, as you can see, hang on, well, I'll show you. We do have quite a large pile of notebooks already here, as well as the stack on my desk, and as well as the fact that probably those cupboards are full. So we are gonna to need to do some sorting, and I know there's quite a lot of magazines under there too. Yeah, I'm actually gonna do a separate video on organizing and decluttering my magazines, because I've got a lot, and I really do need to go through them. Right, let's get going. <laughs> bit I'm gonna take outside and get out the way plus some cardboard for recycling and over here we've got three carrier bags full of fabric scraps that are no use for anything so these will be put into old pillowcases and used as insulation in our loft <laughs> I have finished. At last I finished, I'm done. And by that I mean I have done enough. You saw the state of the room at the beginning. I've been doing this for two or three weeks now, taking time off work as well as filling my weekends with doing this room and I've got to the point where that's really as far as I'm gonna go. I know there's still bits on the edges so I hope you're not too disappointed that you're not gonna be seeing an absolutely pristine sewing room at the end of this video. But you'll see I have made 
a vast improvement so <laughs> I hope you agree. Okay so I'll just quickly show you some of the storage bits that I've been doing and organising and stuff. I don't know I started this video so long ago now I can't remember what I've told you about and what I haven't so I hope I don't repeat myself so here we go. I think I showed you the room from this corner before this is what it looks like now. Look at all this floor space! look you can see the floor and i can't remember did i show you from this side as well this is it from this side uh this cupboard hasn't changed it's mainly all my festival work jewelry making stuff and so i moved the big package of tutu net over to here it's quite nice to look at that actually particularly as my ballet shoes are hanging above and i've got the big bag of old crochet lace stuff on top of Oh, there's a bit of leather there that's got to go in the leather working cupboard. I'll do that quickly. Yeah, so this basket here is also full of more scrappy bits of tutu net. Oh, that's heavy. And that's sitting on top. All my bullet journals and diaries and things. And here's the desk. And really all this stuff could do with a proper declutter. But again, that's going to be another day. My notebooks are much more neatly sorted and I know what's what. I found this actually in, in the corner by the door. That's from Chris's old office, I think. So I was thinking about painting it a more feminine colour it's quite a masculine desk tidy isn't it a photo from the kids of their disney tattoo when they went to disneyland paris this is the dress i already am working on and which reminds me these bags of fabric here are also for the dress to actually i started two dresses which was probably a mistake but those bags are now at least sorted and organized one for that dress and one for the next one so yeah i haven't done much in that corner oh gosh and i've just seen this oh that's something i really could have done i should have done that before the end of this video because those were just out for an instagram picture and they belong on the uh, top rung of my beautiful cotton wheel rack which i by the way i have a whole video just me organizing these there's another one on that side on the back of my sewing chair these are sort of things in progress so that's why i'm allowing those to be out for the moment because i want to get that done and then yeah under Underneath the window and this is my cupboard of dreams look just about squeezing in so on the left hand side here we've got notebooks that up up to this point all of these notebooks are actually full but every now and then I want to reference them so I don't want them to go like as far away as up in the loft or anything like that these above there are actually part used notebooks often the kids ones that they've had from school and i can't stand waste of paper so those are there for when i need notebooks that i don't need to worry about and then these here are all empty notebooks i shall have to put a memo out to family that i don't need any notebooks for christmas next year probably just could do one year off yeah these are all my nice ones that i can't wait to start using and i did get my sketch pads in here but i'm a little bit nervous about opening this door because the A2 ones had to go sideways and had literally, literally just got them all in. Right, it's so nice to actually have space to open and shut this curtain and it fit behind the storage. I know this looks awful as it is, but this is so much better and so much more organised than it perhaps looks <laughs> and what definitely better than it was before so as you know already all the big bits of fabric got on that shelving unit and this is all scrapped or at least mostly so originally oh that's to go in my jewelry cupboard and on top of here we have some bottle bags that i made for glastonbury festival but obviously they could be used for any time these are separate from the others because they don't have a drawstring the ones that ended up getting sold at the festival had a had a drawstring to hold your bottle in if you're getting the official glastonbury festival flask then it fits quite snugly and you don't really need a drawstring so i need to put those on a separate listing on etsy none of these baskets and storage boxes have really changed that's all my lace i've got a basket of things i was making khaleesi costumes with actually but that's sort of being retired now there's only one more series left so here we do have a bit of the miscellaneous bags this is a bag of silk shirts that i bought in a vintage fabric kilo sale here we've got some quite horrible lining fabric probably from the 60s or 70s i'd never what's the word inflict that on anybody these days but really good for cutting out and making um, flowers and burning the edges with that sort of nylon works well for that uh, in this bag oh we've got an antique jacket in that waiting to be used to make something a wool blanket and then underneath that there's another box of stuff that I've also bought from an antique fair. Oh, a bit of yellow felt and then that box is antique clothes as well that I didn't want to 
put away with the wedding dresses because it doesn't quite go with the wedding dresses. We've got a bag here of stiffener and other miscellaneous bits and pieces. I think we've got some more bottle bags that some that need washing that came back unsold a bit muddy and that bag of fringing. So that's that. I mean, I'm still so pleased with this. There was a couple of bits that didn't quite fit in the colours like that bit and that bit, the blue velvet had to be sort of shoved up there and then over here i do have a massive laura ashley curtain that i don't know whether to resell or convert into a rug or something because it's far too heavy and thick to really make clothing with this bit is a vast improvement could probably do with some work there's things like pictures that are waiting for me to put on the wall and i think this room has looked tidier before for the last video if you want to see everything in a little bit more detail and I talk through some more of my personal bits and pieces and sentimental things that I have around this room in another video which I will link below I think I call it my sewing room tour or maybe my craft room tour I can't remember anyway I'll put that link in a link below and I'll also link below the video of last time I tried tidy up in here that's it from me I hope you in watching me organize my fabric and get a little bit more sorted in here it has really helped i now know that the next projects i need to do sewing wise is get rid of these i'm really looking forward to making them actually so that will clear this space here which i, de I definitely like the space cleared and then i shall tackle some of the big bigger thicker pieces of fabric in the shelving unit to make sure i have space if i accidentally happen to get any more fabric <laughs> <laughs> so if you did enjoy this please give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here I'd love to see you again so please subscribe and if you have friends that you think might be interested in seeing this video please share the link with them I'd really appreciate it so that's it from me thank you for watching see you next time bye